sound like a normal human being again. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> okay. All right, ladies. I am going to put you all on mute. And we'll get started. So I'm sorry Danielle isn't here today because she actually inspired this class as well as the story that I'm going to share. I'm going to tell you part of the story and towards an intravasana, I'll tell you the rest of the story. Well, we'll see. We'll see how it, we'll see how it all unfolds. So basically what we are we're going to talk about a little bit about Ganesh. But this is not how I plan on starting this class. So I'm going to start the class how I actually plan to start it. So <laughs> come into a come. I'm just really excited to hear the story. Come into a comfortable seated position. And we're going to start. We're going to open our class with a sound of Aum. So bring your hands together and Anjali Namaskar at your heart. Sitting up nice and tall, we'll take a breath in and then exhale through the mouth and then inhale and exhale for all. So take a full breath in. Exhale, clear it out. And inhale. Uh, uh. And we're just going to repeat three rounds of the Ganesh root mantra. If you know it, you can join me. If you don't, that's okay. You can just sit and bask in the melodic strains of my voice as I sing it. <laughs> so it's actually Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha. So I'll say it three times and then we'll move on. Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha. Om gam ganapataye namaha. Om gam ganapataye namaha. You can release your hands and place them on your thighs. Now, I don't know how much or if you know anything about Ganesh, but Ganesh is one of my favorite gods or deities. He's the elephant god. And he is the holder of wisdom and truth. He has a very steadying and grounding energy about him. He's also the placer of obstacles and the remover of obstacles. And he has an enormous sweet tooth. I mean, the biggest sweet tooth one could imagine a person could have. And the story is really about Ganesh and the moon. So the first part of the story goes, one day Ganesh had just left this function and had eaten his weight in treats. He's often seen with a tray. He's often depicted with a tray with, filled with prasad, which is, which is sweets and cakes and stuff like that. And on this occasion, he had eaten so many cakes and sweets that his belly was almost bursting. So he's on his way home, traveling on his steed. And quite ironically enough, his steed is a tiny little mouse. So with great skill, this elephant had to balance traveling through the plains, through the forest, wherever, on this tiny little mouse to get home safely. And on their way home, this long cobra crossed his path and scared the living daylights out of the mouse. The mouse took off one way and Ganesh flew the other way. And when he landed, his belly so full of sweets burst and cakes and sweets scattered everywhere. So Ganesh was upset, understandably, because his favorite thing in the world is now scattered all over the floor. So he's very perturbed, he's so upset, he goes about gathering them all up, stuffs them back into his belly, 
really annoyed with the cobra, grabs the cobra up and wraps it around his waist and ties it in a knot to keep all of his wonderful, delicious treats in. And that's where I'm gonna pause with the story. I'll tell you the rest when we get to Shavasana. So the invitation for you lovely ladies today is to embody the energy of Ganesha from the perspective of finding that grounded, steady energy as you go through the asanas and play with the balance, that, that, that dynamic balance between stillness and movement as we go through the asanas. Remember Ganesh had to really figure out how to be on this tiny little mouse and not fall off. So that's what I want you to explore today as we go through our asanas. How can you ground to grow, which is the root um, mantra, if you will, or root, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, let's call it a mantra, ground to grow. That is also synonymous with Ganesh because that is the kind of energy that he cultivates. So that being said, go ahead and make your way onto your back and come into constructive rest. So with your feet slightly apart or wider than your hips, draw your knees in towards each other. And take your arms along the side of your body and your palms are facing up. Take a full breath in, hold it in, and exhale it out. A couple more rounds of breath. And now go ahead and draw your knees into your chest. And just give yourself a gentle squeeze. Keep your right knee in and extend your left leg fully along your mat. Ground your heel into the earth and energetically move the heel towards the pelvis. Take your hands to the back of your right thigh, push the thigh into your hands and extend your right foot all the way up towards the sky. Spread the toes wide on both feet. Root your shoulder blades into your mat keeping your spine long and free and clear of any tension. Lower back is lifted. Continue to breathe deeply and fully. And if it feels as though you can take this stretch a little bit further, you can go ahead and bring your leg in a little bit closer towards your forehead. As long as it's not changing the orientation of your spine, you wanna maintain that neutral spine. Take one more full breath in and out here. Release your hand from the back of your thigh and keep your leg up. Take the hands wide and press your palms into the earth. Reconnect the back of your left thigh and the heel into the earth. Take a full breath in and on the exhalation, slowly lower your right leg out to the right. Try as best as you can to keep your hips and pelvis level. So don't allow the left hip to lift. Keep the toes active and vibrant. Really activate your inner thigh muscles here. Tone your low belly to help support you. We won't stay here for much longer. Take a full breath in and on your exhalation, slowly bring your leg back up and now move it over to the left, not all the way over. You wanna keep your left SI joint down or the left hip down. So you're just, the right foot is gonna probably hover over your left hip. 
just getting into the outer hip and into the IT band. Take your right thumb, place it into the crease at the hip and just move the hip bone down away from your rib cage. Hold it here, keep your toes spread and wide and keep your left leg superly strong anchored onto the earth. And then slowly bring your right leg back up and into the chest for a little squeeze. And then let's change sides. Root down your right leg, ground it, and then draw your left knee in, hands to the back of the thigh, push your thigh into your hands and extend your left one up to the sky. And up to the moon. On your next exhale, slowly release your bind and start to lower your left leg out to the left, staying grounded through the right leg. Press your palms down into the earth to give you a little bit of support. And now the next out breath, bring your leg back up and start to move it over to your right. And then pause, take the thumb and put it into the hip crease and just guide the hip away from the lower rib. And slowly bring it back up. Bring both knees now into your chest. Quick little squeeze here. And now bring both feet to the floor. And walk your feet a little bit further away from your bum as you, than you would for a regular bridge pose. We're going into an anchored bridge to wake up the power of the back of the body. So if you had a water bottle nearby, you want your knees to be about the height of your water bottle. So they're not too deeply bent and they're not too straight either. If you have a block or a pillow, place it between your thighs. You can squeeze into the block. You're bringing your big toes to touch and push them into each other. And your heels are apart at about a fist distance apart. And now flex your ankles so that your feet are pointing up towards the sky. And you're really engaging the shin muscles. Spread the toes and pick the pinky toe side edge of the foot up so you turn on the power of your outer shins. Push your heels down into the earth and gently drag the heels towards your crown. Tone the belly, especially the low abs, keep pushing the knees or squeezing the inner thighs in to activate your inner thigh power to protect your lower back. Take a full breath into the back and sides of the body and on the exhalation, extend your arms up towards the moon, bend all of your fingers and bring the tops of your fingers to connect. Spin the armpits up towards your heart. Take a full breath in. Now the exhalation, press down into your heels and lift your pelvis off just a hover. Keep squeezing into your block. Keep pressing your heels down. Keep toning the low belly and breathe into the back body. If you wanna take this a little bit further, start to lower your mudra up above your head. Hold it here, keep breathing, press the pinkies into each other as well. Breathe, breathe, breathe. One more full breath in and exhale, release. Good stuff. Walk your feet back in closer to your bum. Roll onto your side and press yourself up and make your way onto your hands and knees. Tucking your toes under, 
wrist, creating one straight line across left to right or right to left, spread your fingers super wide, claw your hands into the mat. Feel grounded and connected to the earth and draw the energy from the earth through your limbs into the pelvis and into the heart. Moving into your cat and cow, inhaling to extend and exhaling to round your spine to any degree of comfort. Moving with your breath. One more of each. And then come back to a center with a nice long spine. Taking the right leg up, keeping the knee bent, spreading the toes wide, push your heel up towards the ceiling and slowly bring the knee back down and I'll lift it out to the side. Think of fire hydrants, you turn around so you can see. So inhale, drive the heel up. And exhale, drop the knee down or lift it out to the side. Couple more of these, inhale up, exhale out. Inhale up and exhale it out. Two more. Last one. Bring the foot all the way up to the ceiling. Come up onto your fingertips to create a little bit of space. And I'll bring the knee into the chest as close as you can and pull the foot through to the front of your mat. You can walk the left knee back a little bit if you need to. Stay up on your fingertips. Take it into a nice low lunge. Energetically drag your front heel to the back knee so you feel the inner thighs kick in. And a little bit of hamstring action here. Curl the heart forward. Take a full breath in and out. From here, kickstand your left foot all the way across. And now take a full breath in, sweep the left arm up. And kind of like a reverse cartwheel to the back of your mat. Place the left hand down. Keep the right foot facing forward. Push into the right foot to straighten the knee out and lift up into a modified side plank. You can either have your right arm alongside your ear or reach it up towards the moon, spread your fingers wide. Gently push the hips forward, full breath in, and a full breath out. Draw the head of the arm bones back and feel the shoulder blades fit firmly to the back of your rib cage. Go ahead and re-bend. So press your right foot down and pull yourself back up through the power of the hamstring. Recartwheel the hands down, kickstand the left leg back, draw the right hip back, full breath in as you reach the right arm forward, and exhale to move into a twist. One more inhale, and exhale back to active child's pose. Toes tucked, stay up on your fingertips. Press them down into the earth. Draw the low belly in, ribs in. Breathe into the rib cage, front sides and back. Really expansive, big belly, just like our Ganesh. And exhale, draw it in. Drop your palms, inhale, shift forward. You can pick the, heel, the feet off or leave them down. Bend the elbows, soften the heart and exhale it back. Just two more of these priming movements just to get our body ready for our practice, our journey through these asanas. One more. Come back to active child's pose. And now make your way back into your hands and knees and let's move on to the second side. Left foot rises up towards the moon. Bring the knee down to the earth and open it up to the side. About five more of these, moving with your breath, moving at your pace. Always being mindful of drawing into the midlines, especially the knee when we bring the leg up behind. 
So we're not allowing the hips to splay open until we're ready for that. I've lost count here. So the next time you take your foot up towards the sky, keep it there. And now bring the knee down, but don't let it touch. Come up onto your fingertips and step your left foot through. Good. Scissor your legs. Take an inhale as you move the heart forward and exhale, just settle here for a moment. And now kick stand the right foot all the way across. Normally we do it to an angle, but you're taking it all the way across so it's perpendicular to the mat. And now reverse cartwheel yourself. So push down into your left foot to guide you to the back of the mat. Plant the right hand, fit the arm, the arm bone back. Take a full breath and extend the left fingertips to the sky or take, it, take your arm alongside your ear, your choice. Full breath and press your left foot down into the earth. Push your hips forward. One more inhale here. And with the strength and power of your leg on your front foot, just pull yourself back into that twist. Reset your right foot, plant your right hand. Inhale, left arm reaches forward. Exhale, open up. Heart to the inside of your left thigh. Gaze can be to your left fingertips or you can let down to the earth, whichever feels most comfortable for your neck. Full breath in, full breath out. Replant your left hand and step it back into our active child's pose once again. Two full breaths in, exhale fully. Inhale again, and exhale. Ground your palms. Two to three cobra primer movements here. Shift forward and back. We'll do one more and the third one will come all the way down. Shift forward and slowly lower. Come all the way down and extend through the knees. If the feet were up, draw the head of the arm bones back. Inhale, pull the heart through. Any degree of back bend here is more than enough. And then slowly release. Tuck your toes, press yourself through the plank up into tiger dog. So a generous bend to the knees. Claw your hands into the mat, your tiger paws. Move the inner thighs back, pull your low ribs in. Take a full breath in and out. And then slowly start to extend through the knees, moving your heels towards the earth for your full at home mukha svanasana, downward facing dog. Take another big breath in and out. Now step your feet as wide as your sticky mat, and let's make our way to the back of the mat for a functional forward fold. Bend your knees any degree here, but line the edges of your feet up with the edges of your mat. Stay high on your fingertips. Shift the weight into your heels. Move your inner thighs back as you hinge the hips back. Sorry, yeah, I didn't mean to say that. As you hinge your hips back and counter reach the hands and the fingertips forward. Imagine you can breathe into the rib cage and make your rib cage as big and round as Ganesha's belly. So fill it all the way up with air like he fills his belly with sweets. And exhale, tone the low belly. Keep the rib cage full and vibrant and buoyant. Two more, inhale and exhale. Last one, full breath in and exhale. Slide your hands or place them on your shins. Press down into the earth and inhale with a nice long spine. Slowly come all the way up to stand. Bring your arms around. Step your feet to hips distance. Grab a hold of your right wrist with your left hand, going over to the lunar side. Take a full breath in and exhale over to your left. Inhale to the middle, switch your grip and exhale over to your right. The little half moon crescent here. One more time, inhale center, switch your grip and exhale left. Come back to the middle and over to the right. Inhale into Udva Asthasana. 
Exhale, bring your hands to the heart as you hinge hips back and come into Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. And exhale, fold deeply, bend your knees and walk out to plank, Palankasana. Take another full breath in here and exhale, shift your hips up for Adho Mukha Svanasana and bring your right leg up at the same time, making it an echo paddle version. Keeping the hips and pelvis square, bend your right knee into the chest and step it forward. Come up onto fingertips or hands to blocks. Drop the pelvis, scissor the legs. Inhale, heart rolls forward. Exhale, straighten out the right knee, shifting your hips back. Lift the right toes up. Keep the spine long. We're gonna flow back and forth from these two points, your low lunge into your variation of Parso Tanasana, pyramid pose. Exhale, shift it back. Inhale forward. Exhale it back and forward. Two more. On the last one, hold it here with the toes up. Scissor the legs. Remember how we took the thumb to the hip crease to prevent that hike of the hip. You can do that again here. If you feel it's popping out to the right, take the thumb to the crease, draw it back and pull it back into the center. Cinch the waist, another full breath in, drag your feet towards each other. Slowly rebend the knee and step it back into downward facing dog. Inhale, plank, rest the knees, exhale into your chaturanga. Come all the way down, take a baby cobra or higher up to you. Slowly release, tuck your toes and press it up into downward facing dog. Left leg lifts, step it forward to the top of your mat. Come up onto fingertips or blocks with your hands. Inhale it here, exhale, shift it back. As the right heel drops, the left toes lift, as does, as does your gaze. For it again, and shift it back. Three more. Allow the breath to guide your movements here. Stay anchored and grounded into the earth to help you find a little bit of balance. And not take it too seriously if you fall out of balance at any point in time. Not much like Ganesh did. Hold it here. Press the heel down. Bend the left knee if you need to. The hamstrings aren't quite ready yet. And energetically draw the feet towards each other. Heart moves forward, spine is long. Adjust the hip on the left if you need to. One more full and expansive breath. And then release, re-bend your left knee, plant your hand, step it back, Adho Mukha. Inhale into Polankasana, rest the knees if you wish. Lower into an Ardha Chaturanga or full. Come all the way down, full Bhujangasana here. Just like the cobra that crossed the path and angered Ganesh so much. Take it up and back into Adho Mukha. Full breath in, full breath out. Two more rounds, inhale and exhale. On your next in breath, sweep your right leg up. Bend your knee and open up your hip. Be aware of the left side of the body as you lift the right inner thigh up. Make sure you're not allowing the left armpit to drop. Resquare the hip. And now step your right foot to the top of your mat. Rest your left knee down. Scissor your legs. And draw the energy from the earth to the pelvis and from the pelvis, reach it all the way through the fingertips and the crown as you rise up for Anjaneyasana. Grab a hold of your right wrist with your left hand. Take a full breath into the back and sides of the body and exhale over to your left. Inhale through center, switch your grip and exhale to your right. Inhale to the middle, release your bind, but now bring the arms to round to the back of you and interlace all of your fingers. 
Take a full breath in, curl the heart forward and lift up away from the pelvis as you reach the knuckles to the back of your mat. Hold steady here. Find that steady grounding energy here. We're going to need it. <laughs> from here, we're going to shift our body weight forward. Float the left knee off and travel into a warrior three. Find the playfulness here. Have a little bit of a bend to your right knee. Draw your right hip back and move the inner left thigh up towards the sky. Keep reaching the knuckles to the back of the mat. Keep reaching the crown away from the heart towards the front. Slowly bend the right knee and extend again. Bend your right knee again and press it back up. Three more. Bend and extend. Woo. Pressure. Whoops, last one here. Oh boy. <laughs> Come back up into your warrior three. Bend the right knee and carefully rest your left toes down. Are you aware of your glutes? Hopefully. Slowly release the bind and sweep your arms up. On the exhalation, take the left hand over to the outside of the right knee. Take the right hand to the back of your hamstring on the left side. Take a full breath in and exhale, twist over to the right. On your next inhalation, slowly unwind back up to center into your high lunge and exhale, drop the back heel down and open up into Virabhadrasana two. I'm going to turn around. <sighs> turn your right palm to face up. And go ahead and reverse your warrior. Big breath in. Reach your arms up and curl it back and exhale here. Rest in the left hand carefully on the bat leg. Or you can take it to the heart or maybe to the belly or around to your right hip crease. Keep breathing deeply and fully here. On your next inhalation, pass through your warrior two, cartwheel your hands down to the mat and step it back into downward facing dog. Take your vinyasa or rest. If you're flowing, shift forward into your plank, full or modified. Take it into your chaturanga, full or ardha. Take it into up dog or cobra. Exhale it up and back into downward facing dog. Two rounds of breath, big belly breath. On your next inhalation, sweep your left leg up, bend your knee, open up your hip. Re-square the hips, keeping the knee bent, and now step it forward. Rest your right knee. Now that we have a clear idea of our path, we can further prepare for it, better prepare for it. Hug into the midline, ground through from the pelvis to the earth. Inhale, pick it all the way up. Exhale it here. Take the arms around behind you and interlace your fingers the way that feels really unusual, unfamiliar. Reach the knuckles away as you curl the heart forward and up on the inhale. And exhale. Getting ready to transition into our warrior three with our shoulder stretch. Start to shift the weight forward and really power down into your left leg and foot and pick the right knee up, hop it in a little bit. And now transition into your warrior three. Keep a bend to the left knee. Spread the toes on your right foot, draw your left hip back. Spin the inner right thigh up to the moon, and extend through the crown and the sole of your foot, bring them, move them as far away from each other. So ground down through your legs so you can 
grow your spine and your body and expand. Finding steadiness here as we balance. Five one-legged squats. One, two, three, four, and five. Keep the bend in the knee. Gently rest the right toes to the back of your mat. Inhale, sweep your arms up. Exhale, move into your twisted lunge. You can bend the back knee. Right hand to the outside of the left thigh. Push those two points that connect into each other. And now take the left hand to the right hamstring and push those two points into each other. Take a full inhale. Allow the spine to grow towards the moon and exhale, twist to your left. Draw the left shoulder back. Right shoulder moves away from the middle of the spine, right shoulder blade. Inhale, release back into your high lunge. Exhale it down into Virabhadrasana two. Turn your left palm up and inhale, reach it forward and up and exhale it back. Reverse warrior, Viparita, Virabhadrasana. Take an inhale through your warrior two. Exhale, downward facing dog. You know the drill. Rest or flow. Full breath in. Full breath out. One more big breath in. Big breath out. Pick your right leg up for three-legged dog and shift forward into a three-legged plank. Sweep it back up again. Three-legged dog. Shift it forward into a three-legged plank. One more time. Shift it up. Shift it forward. Three-legged dog. And I'll step your right foot to the top of your mat. Ground down through the legs. Inhale, reach all the way up. Oh, and exhale, <laughs> drop the back heel down and open up into warrior two. I just remembered, I forgot our side bend on the other side in our Anjaneyasana. <clears throat> we'll get it in on the next side here if I remember. From here, go ahead and turn the right palm up and reverse your warrior. Inhale through your warrior two, straighten out the front knee and move into Utita Trikonasana. You can take a block to the floor for your right hand or come up onto fingertips. Hand is moving to the outside of the shin. Really extend the left fingertips up towards the sky. Pull the lower ribs in, take a full breath into the back of the body. And on the exhalation, see if you can move the right rib cage forward a little bit more. Gaze can be down to the earth, straight ahead, or if it feels okay in your neck, you can look up towards the sky. If you wanna look up, drop your head down to the right a little bit, and then turn to look up towards the left thumb.
pick up the right toes, press the heel down into the earth. Replant the foot, bend the knee and inhale, come all the way up into Tarasana. So just take a moment here to check that your ankles and your wrists are aligned. They're not just adjust. Take a bend to the knee, bring the arms down by the sides of the body, palms facing forward. Activate your tiger paws here. Take a full breath in, span the rib cage wide and full. Hinge the hips back as you exhale, reach the arms forward, bring the tops of the fingers to connect. Keep hinging your hips back as you move the mudra forward. You're not going all the way down to the ground. You're gonna pause when you get to halfway. So your upper body is gonna be parallel to the earth. If that's uncomfortable for you, then you can keep the upper body up a little bit higher but really pull the low ribs in. There's a tendency, I certainly have it, to allow the low ribs, the floating ribs to pop into flare. You've got to keep that bend to the knee, press down from the pelvis through the legs into the earth, and then drag the feet in towards each other to support you. So to make it, to bajanize it, pooch back, yes? So stick the booty out, reach the mudra forward. And I'll go ahead and bend the right knee shift over to the right for a side lunge send the hips back the hips keep moving back weight to the heels shift, stay low and shift over to the left to the right once again just activating the posterior chain firing up the back body back to the left one more to the right back to the left hold it there turn to the front of the mat left foot's going to be well turn it to the back of the mat Left foot's gonna be in front. Plant the hands and step it back, downward facing dog. Rest or flow, shift forward. You can rest the knees, lower into your chaturanga. Take it into cobra, bhujangasana, honoring the cobra that shook Ganesh in the mouth to the core. Press it up and back, downward facing dog. Full breath in, full breath out. Left leg lifts. Shift forward into your three-legged plank, three-legged dog, three-legged plank, three-legged dog, three-legged plank. Last three-legged dog here and step it forward to the top of your mat. Set your foundation and then slowly rise up. Let's get the lunge, the side bend here now. So grab a hold of your right wrist and move over to the left. Switch the grip and come back to the right. Good, come back to center. Now drop your back heel and move into your warrior two. Hmm. Left palm is up. Go ahead and reverse your warrior. <laughs> Keep breathing deeply. Keep breathing fully. A little wardrobe change here. From your reverse warrior, take a full breath and straighten out your left knee and move into your tree konasana. Remember the adjustment we make at the hip. So you're drawing the left hip back and pulling it under, spinning the left rib cage or left lung rather forward to the front. So you open up and deepen your twist here. Spread the toes of the left foot and lift them up. Push the heel down into the earth and draw it strongly back towards the right heel. Replant your left foot, bend the knee and push yourself up into Tarasana once again. Make your feet parallel. Check to make sure they're lining up with the edges of your mat. Drop your arms down by the side, bend your knees. The knees are soft. Push the four corners of your feet into your mat and then magnetically draw the opposite ball of the big of the toe 
to the inner heel. So there's an X connection of power you're creating between the legs and the inner thighs. Go ahead and take a full breath into the back. Barbara coming back to that hinge. Hinge the hips back. And at the same time, reach forward. It's that counter reaching that we do when we're in our functional forward fold. The weight will shift to your heels to help anchor you a little bit more here. These are the skills that we use to help us to balance, just like Ganesh used his skills to balance on his tiny little steed. Press the fingers into each other, particularly your pinky finger to activate that power along that line. Full breath in, full breath out. Low belly in, low ribs in. Bend your left knee, shift over to the left, stay low. And now shift over to your right. Shift over to the left. And over to the right. And now turn to the right. So you're back to the front of your mat and step it back into downward facing dog. Uh oh. Okay. Still with me. Good. Take your vinyasa or rest. Your choice. Two rounds of breath, full breath in, full breath out. Last one here, inhale and exhale. Go ahead and pick your right leg up and step it to the top of your mat. Stay down, but come up onto your fingertips. Moving the heart forward and the gaze is to the front of the mat and you're hugging into the midline. Go ahead and as you go ahead and straighten out the front knee, bend your back knee for reverse lunge, if you will, or flamingo variation. Stay up on your fingertips or hands to blocks, press down into the right big toe mound. Keep the spine long. Think about moving your inner thighs back. Start to bounce a little bit in the back leg. Just really getting ready to spring forward into standing splits. So take an inhale and an exhale. Inhale, shift forward, float your left leg. Pause in a supported warrior three. Bend both knees generously. Take the right forearm and wrap it around the back of your right calf muscle. See if you can keep your belly on the top of your thigh. Start to power the left leg up towards the sky, spreading the toes and pull yourself into the fold to any degree. You can choose to stay in warrior three as well, supported warrior three. Draw the right hip back, move your inner thighs up towards the moon. Slowly rebend your right knee, plant your left foot to the back of the mat. Inhale, sweep it up into a high lunge and exhale, drop the back heel, warrior two. We're nearly there, I promise. It's soon going to be story time, or the rest of the story. <sighs> Turn your right palm up. Reverse your warrior. Pass through your warrior two, but into side angle, parsva konasana. Right forearm to right thigh, left arm alongside left ear. Take your left hand to your hip. Hop your left foot in halfway. Reach for the upper right hand corner of your mat with your fingers and shift your body into Ardha Chandrasana. Half moon pose. Take a few moments here to set your foundation. Feel the tops of your fingers or hands to block firmly set. Grip the floor with your foot. Engage the leg muscles. Use your left hand to guide the left hip open on to stack it onto the right hip. 
spread your toes, hand can stay on hip, or you can extend the fingertips of your left arm up towards the sky. Draw the left shoulder blade back. Hold it here. Tune into the body and feel all of the tiny little movements that are happening to help you find a little moment of stillness here and steadiness. Listen very carefully from our Ardha Chandrasana. We're going to step the left foot back and move into Skandasana. Hopefully in one smooth move. Take a full breath in, full breath out. And now inhale, bend your right knee. Slowly drop the back heel, straighten out the front, bend the left knee, hands to Anjali. Use the power of your right hamstring to pull you back to the front of the mat. Plant the hands, drop the left knee. Are you with me? Yeah, heel toe the right foot to the edge of the mat, turn your toes out about a 20 to 30 degree angle. <laughs> Hold it here. Moving into a twisted monkey lunge, option to stay on your hands or come down onto a block with the forearms. Or if you can leave the block out, you can do that and take the left forearm down. Hold it here, draw into the midline. Shift your weight a little bit over to the left. Secure the shoulder blade to the back of the rib cage on the left side. Take a full breath in, reach the right arm out. And externally rotate through the shoulder and reach your right arm back. Thumb is pointing up. Fire up the power of the left hamstring to bend the left knee. You can stay here where you energetically reach for your left foot, or if you can, grab the foot or use a strap if you have one handy. Keep pulling the heel and the knee towards each other, front heel, back knee. Take a full breath into the back body and exhale, curl the heart forward and up towards the moon. Bring the chin in so the back of the neck stays long. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Slowly release, move very carefully here. Replant your hands, replant your left foot and step it all the way back into downward facing dog. Your choice to rest or flow. Left leg lifts, step it to the top of your mat. Come up onto your fingertips, draw your left hip back, spine is long. Take a full breath in on the exhalation, bend your right knee straight and not your left. You can pick the left toes up here or you can leave them down. Pull the front heel and the back toes towards each other. Move the inner thighs back. I guess you could call this like a floating Hanuman. I think I like that better than a reverse lunge. Take a full breath in, full breath out. And start to gather the energy from the earth. So start to pump the back legs. So just pounce a little bit, bounce up and down. And then take a full breath in, shift forward into the left leg and spring yourself into that supported warrior three position. Stay here or bend both knees a whole bunch, getting the belly onto the top of the left thigh, cup the forearm or the left arm around the back of your left calf muscle. On your inhalation, move the right leg back and up towards the sky, pull the forehead towards your shin. Keeping the hips and pelvis level and square. Doesn't matter how high you get the leg. Just lean into the balance. One 
one more inhale. Exhale, release your right foot to the floor, rest it gently. Come all the way up into your high lunge and now drop it into your warrior two. Move into your reverse warrior. And come into your side angle, parse with Konasana. Right hand to right hip. Pop your right foot in a little bit. Shift your gaze to the upper left hand corner of your mat and now energetically reach with the left fingertips, float your right leg. Left hip moves back, right thigh is moving up. Open up the heart, the long side of the mat. Keep your hand to the hip or reach it up towards the sky. Ground to grow, root the leg and the hand, pull the energy up and expand through all limbs. We bend your left knee, carefully place your right foot to the back of the mat. Think of your warrior two stance, bend the right knee, straighten out the left hands to heart for a skandhasana variation. Just pausing here for a moment. And now shift back to the front of your mat. Take the right knee to the earth, spin the left toes out, walk the foot over to the left a bit, preparing for a twisted monkey lunge on the second side. You know where your limit is, where your edge is. So come into that form, your form of your twisted monkey lunge. Stay up on height, stay up on your hands, or come down to the forearm. Regardless of which variation you choose, make sure you secure the shoulder blade to the back of the rib cage to take care of your shoulder. Bend your right knee, fire up the power of the hamstring, spread the toes, really, really reach from the pelvis all the way opening up the left side of the body, making room and space for more treats. Draw the head of the arm bone back as you open up and grab a hold of your foot or energetically reach for it. One more inhale and exhale, and then carefully release. Plant your left hand, last vinyasa here. Step it back, downward facing dog. Inhale into your plank, rest your knees. Exhale into your chaturanga, come all the way down. Full bhujangasana here, our fullest expression. Slowly release and exhale into an active child's pose. But you can untuck the toes for this one, but stay up on your fingertips. Forehead to come to a block or stack fist if um, having it down and then with the arms out in front doesn't work for you. This is a moment of rest. So if the fingertips, being up on the fingertips isn't restful, then please take a form that serves you. And now allow the belly to expand as much as the rib cage expands with your breath. You can let your arms rest if you haven't already. <laughs>
If your arms are not out in front of you, bring them out in front of you. Rest your forearms down and palms down. Press into them as you inhale to lift your gaze. And now pull yourself forward and moving into Sphinx pose. So walk the knees in and back and gently rest your pelvis. Stretch the toes out to the back of the mat, spread them wide. Press down through the forearms and the palms to lift the torso up. And now isometrically drag your elbows to the back of the mat as you curl your heart forward and up. Bring your chin in so the back of the neck stays long. Shoulders back. Feel into the shoulder blades on the back of the ribs. Tone your low belly. Breathe deeply. Stay here if you're happy here, or if you'd like to explore a form of seal pose, you can take the arms out, the elbows will be off, and you're still lifting up, moving the heart forward, just as you would for Sphinx pose. Still pressure to take it there, you can stay with the forearms down. Big inhale, and then the exhale, slowly release. You can make a pillow with your hands. Bring the forehead to the back of the hands. Step the feet wider, bend your knees, and do it as a gentle windshield wiper from side to side. Belly is soft, shoulders are relaxed, neck is relaxed, jaw relaxed. Great, come to stillness. And however you can, find your way into a seated position. You can bend the elbows, tone everything, press yourself to your knees. Or if you wanna take a downward dog or vinyasa, that's fine too. Ooh, we're almost there, okay. So just a little bit of hip opening in the opposite way, some internal hip opening. We're coming into Gobukasana cow face pose. So cross your right leg over your left. And before we go any further, make sure you're not on your right, your left heel, sorry, make sure it's out to the side and that both of your sitting bones are down. If they are not, please, please, please elevate your hips on height. Okay, so from here, take your left arm up, pat yourself on the back, and now enter to rotate through the right arm or right shoulder and reach your fingertips towards each other. If you can bind, great. If you can't, get a little help from a friend and use your shirt or a strap. There is a tendency to tuck the chin into the chest here, but I want you to resist that urge and push the back of your head into your arm and keep the neck long. We're gonna stay up in this pose. We're not gonna fold just yet. So just hold it here, keeping the spine long. Lower back is in, chest is lifted, pull your lower ribs in. Do not force it. <laughs> Good. Take another full breath in. On your exhalation, release both arms up towards the sky, bring your palms to meet, and now bring them to the heart. Take a full breath in again, and on the exhalation, go ahead and twist over to the right.
on your next inhalation, go ahead and reach your arms back up, coming out of your twist, separate your hands. Exhale here, take another full breath in and now on the exhalation, you're going to hinge forward into your fold. Press down into your hands and inhale, come all the way back up and exhale to release. Good, go ahead and change the cross of your legs. Left leg over right. <clears throat> Ooh, I'm gonna get a little help here. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, that's so much nicer. Okay, right arm up. Pat yourself on the back. Go ahead and internally rotate and reach the fingers towards each other. One side tends to be, certainly the case for me, a little bit more open than the next. So pull the ribs in, low ribs in, spine is long, chin in. Hold it here. On your next inhalation, slowly release and reach your arms all the way up towards the sky. Bring your palms to meet and exhale down to the heart. Take a full breath in and exhale over to your right. So I'm gonna start the rest of the story. So I'm just gonna back it up a little bit. So the last thing I would have said was Ganesh was walking around picking up all of the treats and the cakes and sweets that had exploded out of his belly. Take one more breath in and out here. Inhale, slowly unwind. Take the arms up. Separate them and exhale, hinge forward into your fold. And once he had gathered all of the treats and stuffed them back into his belly, he grabbed a cobra and wrapped it around his waist. And while he was doing this, he, start, he heard laughter. So someone was laughing at him hysterically because they found all of these antics to be hilarious. And as, he turn, as it turns out, it was the moon, Chandra. Chandra was just laughing at Ganesh and the spectacle that he had seen or she had seen unfold below her. Ganesh, son of Shiva, was hopping mad. He broke off his right tusk. Press down into your hands and inhale, lift up and exhale to release. Go ahead and unwrap your legs. Take another pose if you need to, clear that out. And then you're gonna make your way onto your back for Shavasana. So maybe some windshield wipers, maybe a knees into the chest, you choose, but just get comfortable. So Ganesh, got really upset with Chandra laughing at him, made him feel quite foolish. And in his anger, he broke off his tusk, his right tusk, and flung it right up at Chandra and completely took the moon out. Just like that. And went along his way. So the next day, the sun rose. And the day after that, and the day after that, there was nothing but sunshine. There was no more moon. He cursed the moon so that it would never shine again. And that left the earth continuously lit by the sun. With no moon, there was no inspiration, no desire for creation. There was no romance, no love. It was completely lost to the world. 
No night, no dawn, no dust, just pure sunlight all the time. And the gods and the men were just so upset that they all decided to go visit Ganesh and appeal to him to please, please, please let the moon shine again. And Ganesh was so flattered, he decided he could compromise. And he allowed the moon to shine, but it would have to wax and wane. And it would only ever be able to be full once every four weeks. And thus was the birth of Arda Chandrasana, the half moon. He did this because he wanted to remind the moon never to laugh at him again. Ganesh, he always carried that broken tusk that helps remind him of the rage he felt when he lost his balance. So here's the lesson. One of the greatest lessons we can learn is that everything we experience has an internal source of energy. Within our bodies, the sun and moon occupy opposing halves. The moon presides over the left and the, the Edenati, and the sun presides over the right, the Pingalanati. And we always strive to seek balance between these two sources of light, enjoying the moon as much as we enjoy the sun. And our job is to learn how to yield the energies of the sun and the moon to help us on our path on our yoga journey. Well, while Ganesh may have taught Chandra a lesson, the real lesson here is that steeped in only sunshine, all love is lost from the world. There is no softness, no shadow to define the landscape of our heart. Without a dawn or dusk, there is no halfway point in which to steal away during those wee hours of perfect balance between night and day. Within our yoga practice, we learn the truth of that age old wisdom. As above, so below. As without, so within. As the sun, as with the sun and the moon in the sky, so with those in our heart, we seek to find much joy in the shadow and lunar places of our existence, as we do in the bright and solar places of our life.
And once again, becoming aware of your surroundings, and becoming aware of your breath, and beginning to wake your body up, moving your fingers and your toes, stretching it out, and make your way onto your side. And then come into a comfortable seat. Placing your hands at your heart. And let's close our practice today with the sound of Aum. Take a deep breath in, exhale through the mouth. Inhale, exhale for all. Oh. That's it, Thank you very much, ladies. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the story. <laughs> oh. So you can go load up on hot cross buns and get a Ganesh belly. <laughs> oh, these stories are so fun. Thank you. Yeah, we are. Well. I left my glasses so everybody looks like smudges. <laughs> but um, yeah, whoops, thank you 